Hello, my friends. I'm bringing this uh, video to you from Las Vegas. I just want to show you what's outside my window. So if you look outside my window, this is what you'll see, uh, the city of Las Vegas. And, uh, you know, many people call this the Sin City. And some people think it's actually one of the most spiritual cities of the world. I asked somebody about that a while ago. I said, why do you think um, Las Vegas is a spiritual city? And they said, it doesn't pretend it to be what it's not. And I found that very lovely. Be authentic, don't pretend what you're not. And expose yourself just as you are. And uh, don't even be defensive, knowing that we are all evolving to higher states of consciousness. So anyway, this uh, little video is coming to you and I'm recording it on Diwali day. And also today, uh, I was given the information that the next uh, prime minister of uh, Great Britain uh, is Rishi Sunak. So at the same time, in my emails and in my, uh, in my text messages, there were only two messages flooding my my social media as well and my um, uh, text and my whatsapp and my email one was uh, diwali and the second was rishi sunak as the prime minister of great britain so i thought i'd uh, say a little bit about diwali about the festival of lights and also about uh, rishi what a rishi is so Diwali is the festival that celebrates the triumph of, of light over darkness. It, the light of awareness triumphs over the darkness of ignorance. And this is the festival. And this um, is part of the story of the Ramayana, which was written between 7000 BC and 3000 BC. So the story had many iterations, apparently, but the author is a Rishi himself called Valmiki. So the story is uh, that the uh, incarnation of God, Ram, has been banished from his kingdom due to a series of jealousies and intriguing happenings in the kingdom. His wife, uh, Sita, has been abducted by the demon Ravana with uh, many heads, ten heads. And uh, while Ram is the incarnation of God, of the divine, Ravana is the incarnation of the diabolical, of the, of the, uh, of the devil, if you might say, the divine and devil, and both being symbolic representations of the evolutionary and the destructive impulses of creation. So before the battle is going to happen, um, Ram, the incarnation of God, um, has to do a ritual called a yagya. A yagya is a fire ceremony where there is the sacrifice of the absolute for the relative, which is the outcome, and it requires a scholar. Uh, who understands uh, consciousness. And so apparently the most important scholar at, uh, at that time is Ravana, the demon. And so Ram is advised that it should be Ravana who should do the fire ceremony. So he's invited to the forest by Ram and Ravana shows up, the demon, and he says, okay, we're going to do the ritual, but what is your diksha? Diksha means your offering to the one who does the ritual. Um, your kingdom, you don't have, you've been banished. Your wife has been abducted by me. And all you have is a bunch of monkeys led by this uh, faithful, um, faithful friend of yours, Hanuman, the monkey god. And uh, there's not much you can offer. So Ram understands that and says, so what should I do? And Ravana says, okay, this is going to be a huge battle. Good and evil are always 
at war. But ultimately, truth triumphs, so you're going to win. And I have only one request, and that is when you fire your last arrow, fire it directly, uh, direct it to my heart. The arrow of love should pierce my heart so I can be liberated from suffering and I can um, remove my veil of ignorance and play with you in the evolutionary impulse of the universe. And so they make a deal. And Ravana is ultimately vanquished by an arrow directly to his heart. Ram, being divine, can only shoot arrows of love. Can only shoot arrows, like arrows. Boom. So that's the story. But um, that story has been celebrated now for millions of years and uh, is the story that always celebrates the victory of the light of awareness over the darkness of ignorance. But even as we are thinking of that, I think it's important to understand that uh, what we call light normally is uh, photons. And photons are units of light that have a no mass, no, um, no uh, rest mass. They do have energy and uh, they move at the speed of, um, of 300 kilometers or 186,000 miles um, per second. And photons are defined as particles representing a quantum of light or other electromagnetic radiation. And um, the, they carry energy proportional to the radiation frequency, but they have zero rest mass, zero rest mass. And so um, uh, today, photons are the carriers of all information. And they do through, through moving energy because they never stop. And they have a dual nature, particle and wave. The wave is the movement and the particle is the snapshot upon observation. So right now you're watching this video because um, electromagnetic energy is transmitting information coming from me across um, space and time, entering your handheld device or computer and appearing as this video on your screen. But remember, photons have no, no color, no shape, no mass. So what the heck is going on? Uh, what are photons really? And uh, how do they ultimately um, get experienced as the voice of the park or any other voice that you can hear on your, uh, on your video or on your music? Um, uh, musical device or whatever, but how do photons carry information and energy but appear as shapes and colors and sounds and uh, and this experience that we're having and now with VR and immersive experiences and extended uh, VR, um, all the five senses soon will be able to be transmitted. That's the goal and uh, also in three dimensions, all through a deeper understanding of uh, photons, not only as the carriers of energy, but also as information. But how does information become this experience? So what I'd like to offer is that photons, even though they're referred to as light, are really not light. They have no brightness, they have no color, and uh, they have uh, nothing that we associate uh, with light, colors, shapes, forms, objects. Um, so um, they are really uh, not light. They are energetic uh, radiation and uh, at different frequencies, which appears as light in consciousness. And uh, right now, you're seeing the color red, but there is no red moving from here to you. 
through the air waves. There's no red when those uh, photons are uh, hit your eyes. There's no red when the electrical impulse goes to your brain, and there's no red in the brain. And yet, those photons show you all this, all this. How? Of course, you know, that's referred to as the heart problem of consciousness. And I think it's a kind of a red herring because um, um, it is based on the wrong question. It is based on the wrong question. How do uh, particles and waves uh, become experience? When particles them and waves themselves are an experience and, uh, and electromagnetic uh, fields are an interpretation of the experience of energy, uh, however we uh, measure it through devices and through instruments, but um, we experience uh, in some form or another an energy uh, that is called photons. And then uh, we also experience something that we call color and shape and form based on the frequency of that energy. What's happening? What is really happening is consciousness is modifying itself, conceiving, constructing, modifying, knowing itself as the energy field. And then consciousness is converting the energy field into shape, color, form, and in this case, sound. And soon, I hope, every perceptual experience in 3D, the metaverse. So it's consciousness that is light. It imparts um, experience to colorless photons, which are also an experience. Consciousness is conceiving, governing, constructing, and becoming. And it is the light of awareness. Now, how does this relate to Rishi? Rishi Sunak, I hope you're listening. Next Prime Minister of Great Britain. Your name is Rishi. Rishi is a seer and uh, has gone beyond ordinary perception. A person perceives, but a Rishi sees. Rishi is a seer, a sage who has transcended the bamboozled, perceptual, divided mind that is also always classifying things into various categories because the Rishi can see the source of all experience as the field of awareness, as the field of awareness. And that field is a field of infinite possibilities, infinite creativity, infinite synchronicity, is constantly evolving, is self-regulating, and moving in the direction of, uh, of truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, and everything that humans value as um, empathy, interconnectedness, compassion, uh, love, love in action, karma yoga, and joy and equanimity, and self-regulation as healing and the return to wholeness. That's what a Rishi is. A Rishi has great responsibility. And so Rishi Sunak, be not just a Rishi, but a Maharishi. Um, um, remember that the great teachings of the East say, Basudev uh, Kutumbukam, the world is my family. So in former times, uh, Britain subjugated the world and enslaved the world. <laughs> Today, it's the responsibility of Britain uh, to actually um, spread the light of awareness and include the whole world as its family. We are all one family, Vasudev Kutumbukum. And that's your responsibility, Mr. Prime Minister. And I am, and the world will be looking at you to be your name name and form, uh, to take on this great responsibility you have for healing the wounds of a colonial past and uh, bringing the light of awareness to, um, to our world. We desperately need it. 
And so we desperately need a new leadership for a new world, a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. So onward, today we celebrate um, Rishi Sunak. We celebrate Diwali. We celebrate the light of awareness. And we celebrate the evolutionary leap that will create a critical mass for a more peaceful, just, sustainable, healthier, and joyful world. Message coming to you from Las Vegas, a city that doesn't pretend to be what it's not. And what you see out there is brought to you by a bunch of colorless photons. <laughs> okay, I hope uh, this uh, made sense. Sometimes I feel I'm just rambling, but it doesn't matter. Uh, wishing you all happy Diwali and Rishi Sunak all success. The world will support you if you um, remain a Rishi and you will. We are all confident. Mm -hmm.